to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about Murray Smelter. Now we had videos on the Midvale Smelter and on Sandy Smelter, but this is in Murray, so stay tuned. The Murray Smelter. Murray, Utah's history involves nine different smelters from 1870 to 1950. We talked about Murray's early smelter history in my video about Sandy's Mingo Smelter. You might want to check that out. But today's video is on the large American Smelting and Refining Company, a Sargo Smelter. Construction began in 1901, completed early 1902. At the time, it was the world's largest lead smelter and the most up-to-date smelter with a capacity of 1,200 tons of lead per day, running eight blast furnaces. Gold, silver, copper, lead, zinc was discovered at Bingham, Alta, Park City, Tinnick from the years 1863 to 1869. Ores had to be shipped out of the state, well, it was a territory back then, for smelting and refining. Billy Morgan built the first smelter that was at 5189 South State Street on American Hill, and that was in 1869. Murray was called Cottonwood back then. Murray, with its close proximity to both Little and Big Cottonwood Creeks and Jordan River, and access to the railroad, made it a perfect place for smelters. Over the years, more smelters will come, the names will change, and owners will change, until 1899, with the Organization of American Smelting and Refining Company, or Asargo, combining Germania, Hanover, and Sandy's Mingo Smelters. Henry H. Rogers was one of the organizers of Amalgamated Copper Company, Roger was a trusted aide to John D. Rockefeller. They purchased principal smelter works around the U.S. The Guttenheim Exploration Company was doing the same thing. They will combine spring 1900 with Daniel Guttenheim as president. Under Daniel's direction, they will also purchase mining properties. This was to guarantee a steady source of ore to supply to their smelters. The Guttenheims will invest heavily in Utah Copper's open cup mining. They also built the largest copper smelter in the world, and that was at Garfield, Utah, with a lucrative 20-year contract valued at $5 million. We have been looking at some aerial views of that Murray smelter. They were taken October 1946, thanks to Stephen Richardson, who was able to save these pictures. Now, this was prior to Kennecott Research Center being turned over to University of Utah. The 1946 aerial photos were taken for Kennecott to document what the farms were like so they could be used as evidence if the company was sued for damages. I love this picture. It was taken from the top of the tallest smokestack, 1918. Look around early Murray, State Street running diagonal through the picture. 1918 was when the smokestack was just completed. One source said it was 455 feet high. Another said it was 465 feet high. Anyway, early construction photo of that stack dated November 29th, 1917. Then the finished stack dated February 28th, 1918. This smokestack will dominate the Salt Lake City skyline until August 6th. 2000. So let's look at some early pictures of the American smelting and refining smelter. In this one, note the steam engine to the left. Now I think this one was looking west from State Street. December 19th, 1917. I love the old car. And look at the royal bread truck right there. I don't know if that building was an administration building or what. Here's a series of four picture, and it shows the construction of a building there at the smelter. The first one was dated October 31st, 1917. It's interesting to see the construction techniques they used back then. The second one dated December 10th, 1917. Looks like they're putting the roof on now. Look at all the bricks laying around. 
The third, dated December 19, 1917, Working on the Chimney. The fourth is dated December 29, 1917, and the finished product. Did you notice the railroad yard to the side of the building? Now look at this great photo. It's dated October 31st, 1917. This December 29th, 1917 picture, you can see the hazy Wasatch Mountains in the background. So I guess you're looking east. Here's a picture of the smokestacks. Is the building the infamous bag house? I don't know. Then we have some pictures of the smelter workers. This first one was around 1900. Look at the smelter tools in front. Look how long the handles on the shelves are. This photo of the smelter workers was taken 1910. No date on the next one, but I like seeing the work clothes they wore and the hats. Then we have some wonderful pictures taken inside the smelter. <laughs> I wonder where their safety hats, glasses, and shoes and clothing are, though. Can you imagine the heat, the smell, the hard work they had to do? This photo, they're trying to capture smoke flumes from a ladle, it looks like. Then a heavy machinery with an overhead crane. Look at the size of the flywheel in this picture behind the employees. This one has a large electric motor and some huge duct work. Was this used to divert smoke up into the smokestacks? Mm -hmm. Then we have a couple of pictures of the workers' housing dated April 1st, 1918. I wonder if any of these houses still exist. There was a place in Murray called Burger Town that was part of the smelter. The smelter dominated Murray's economy and its skyline for years. Look at these wonderful pictures of the town, always with the looming smokestacks in the background, though. This sculpture at the city park recalls some of Murray's past. I thought that was really neat. Look at this great picture. It's looking east down 53rd South from the railroad tracks. These photos taken June 7th, 1939, shows the Murray Smelters Complex. They're from the Tribune Negative Collection. Dumping slag was an everyday occurrence. What a fun sight to see this at night. The ladles in this picture are small and are being dumped by hand. Look at this ladle train. What a neat little steam engine. The man is using a cable to move the cars around. The hot orange slag is why Murray's High School school colors are orange and black. The school was just south across the street from the smelter. This photo shows a tractor moving some material around. Look at the size of the ladle pots in this later picture, though. The Great Depression would hurt mining and smelting business. World War II would bring some of it back, but only for a short time. By 1949, the smelter was slowing down. October 1950, the plant closed. Around 100 of the 250 employees, some were assigned to the Asargo copper smelter at Garfield. Slag dump was sold for railroad ballast and road-based material. Building raised for salvage value, only a few remained, and the two smokestacks. February 1952, 22 acres were sold to Buer Block Company. January 18, 1994, EPA proposed Murray Smelter site be placed on the Superfund list. August 6, 2000, the two large smokestacks will come down. October 2007, the new Intermountain Medical Center will open at this location where the Murray smelter once was. All that remains is the footprint of the large smokestack's foundation. It shows the size and thickness at the base of that smokestack. It's located at the south end of the campus. So that's the Murray smelter.